All right, class, welcome to the topics for module eight. So I'm going to, I'm going to do some examples and show you how to do uh, goodness of fit tests and uh, one-way ANOVA in StatCrunch so that you can continue to avoid having to use these formulas and you can just do it all using the software. Uh, the first thing is given some sort of probability distribution, uh, finding an expected uh, expected frequency distribution. Uh, essentially all we're doing is we're taking this um, so we have we have in this situation we're describing some probability distribution some the value can be one two three or four and the associated probabilities are 0 0.16, 0 0.37, 0 0.61, and 0.31. If you can picture in your mind a, a, a four-sided die that's weighted in an unfair way. That's what this is representing. So you we want to roll this die 722 times. And I want to ask, what do I expect to get out of this? Like, what? how many times would I expect one to come up? How many times would I expect two to come up? And so forth. Simply put, I would expect 16% of my 722 rolls to be a one, right? So it's just 722 times a 0.16. That's all we have to do to get the answer here. But I, I can, we can do this without actually uh, doing any calculation on our own. I'm gonna show you how you can create a expected frequency count from StatCrunch. And this is especially helpful if, if you had a, 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 a vast probability distribution. So let's, Copy it in StatCrunch. All right, so I've got my values and my probabilities. So here's the way we can, in order for us to get the expected frequency count, we have to do a little bit of a cheaty thing. Um, here's what you can do, all right? So what we wanna do is, let's just call var3, this is, um, this. I'll call it n. And what I'm gonna do is put 722 in column one or in row one, and I'll put some zeros. So this is just a way for me to, to say that um, I wanna do 722 trials. This is a little bit of a workaround, but I'll show you what, we, what, what this gets for us. So I'm gonna go to the stat menu and go to a goodness of fit test, chi-square test. What is observed is my n. I'm gonna pretend that I got seven, one 722 times, but that doesn't even matter. All I'm getting is the expected frequency count. That's what I want. The expected are the pr probabilities in call in the pi pi. This is probability subscript i pi. Um, those are what's expected. The expected frequent uh, expected relative frequencies. Click compute and you'll see what you get. Um, so isn't that nice? Uh, so forget about this observed. That doesn't matter. Um, what we have is these. Um, expected values for one, two, three, and four. So we can copy those right in. Now we're going to run, do a, a goodness of fit test, a chi-square test for this. We have, we, uh, let's see, we observed the value zero, one, two, three, and four these many times. This is what we expected. And so we want, and so for a binomial random variable, we would have expected to see these values. So we want to check, is, it, is a binomial distribution a good fit for this random phenomenon, whatever it is. I know we haven't talked about what binomial variables are, um, but, but we don't really need to know what a binomial variable is. So suffice it to say, if X was a binomial, we would have, after rolling, after, after observing this, uh, phenomenon um, this many times, we would have gotten 1.6 zeros, 25.21s, 151.2s, 402.63s, 402.64s on average or in expectation, right? You know, we're never going to get exactly one point. If you, if you, if this is a, we're rolling the die, whatever it is, you're never going to get the number zero to come up 1.6 times. That doesn't make any sense. With expected frequencies, that's uh, an on average. It's like a long-term average. or if it, So it's a theoretical average for this, right? 
And that's okay. I mean, for calculating whether this follows the model, it's okay for us to have little decimal, decimal places in there. So here's how we do it. We're gonna click this little button, open this in StatCrunch. All right, so we've got um, of our, our observed and expected. So under the stat menu, go down to goodness of fit, chi-square test. Our observed is <laughs> observed, and our expected is expected. <laughs> well labeled. Uh, and we just click compute. So what do, what do we have here? We've got, so for the, for, for what we've observed versus what we would expected, we got a chi-square value of 14.232. This is, the chi-square is the test statistic that we calculate for this type of a problem. So if the chi-square, loosely speaking, the, if, if we, what we observed is vastly different from what we expected, the chi-square test statistic will be bigger and bigger and bigger. If, the chi, if, if what we observed is very close to what we expected, the chi-square value was going to be close to zero. So if a chi-square value was really, really big, we're going to get a very small p-value and we would reject the null hypothesis that, that, the, um, th that, the very, that this is a good fit for our model, like this distribution matches our, what we got in practice. So anyway, let's copy the chi-square value in here and let's walk through the rest of the problem. How many degrees of freedom? It tells it to us right here. There's four degrees of freedom. F, DF is degrees of freedom, four degrees of freedom. It's, in this case, it's, it's, um, it's one less than the number of fact, uh, the number of, uh, we call them treatments or levels for this single factor. Uh, but f don't worry too much about that. It's, it's given to you right here in the, in the output table. DF is degrees of freedom, four degrees of freedom. The critical value, uh, critical value for chi-square, um, to answer that, let's go up to the stat menu, calculators, pull up a chi-square calculator. For a chi-square calculator with, an out, with degrees of freedom of four, we want to find what's the critical value that's going to leave only 0 0.05 in the tail. 0 0.05, put it down here, compute. Remember, we're doing this inverse. Um, and here's, oh, I want the upper tail, not the lower tail. So let's do that again, 0 0.05, click Compute. Here we go. So the, the critical value is 9.48, uh, seven, so it's 9.488, 9.488. So if our test statistic is in that red region, right, if it's bigger than 9.488, then we would reject the null hypothesis that the random variable is binomial we would reject this expected expected um, distribution. We would say, nope, we are not matching it. This is probably not what our variable is doing. So should, we, should the null hypothesis be rejected? Yes, because chi-square is greater than the critical value. Okay, a manufacturer of colored candy states that 13% are brown, 14% are yellow, 13% red, 24% are blue, 20% are orange, and 16% are green. I wonder what those colored candies could be. A student randomly selects a bag of colored candies. He counted the number of candies of each color and obtained the results shown in this table. Let's open the table and let's throw that into StatCrunch because we're going to need it in StatCrunch. So we have proportions versus what we actually observed. So when we're doing a chi-square test, we can either put in uh, a, a expected frequencies or expected relative frequencies, expected proportions. Um, so the null hypothesis would be that the manufacturer's claims are accurate. The alternative is that they're not accurate, okay? So the, the status quo, the less interesting is the null. The distribution of colors is the same as stated by the manufacturer is the null, and the alternative is that it's not the same, okay? So what is the expected count? Let's do under stat menu, we can do our goodness of fit test, a chi-square test. We're going to say what we observed in the frequency. 
what was expected in the claimed proportion, it's going to bring that all the way up to um, expected frequencies, and that's what we're going to have here. We're going to copy this. We have, what, two decimal places, so this is perfect. 51.87. We have 55.86 for the second color. We have 51.87. 95.76, 79.8, and finally 63.84. All right, great. Those are expected counts, the chi-square test statistic. It's given right there in our output. It's 16.141. p-value is also given and we have three decimal places but that would round it up to 0 .007 0 .007 tiny p-value means we reject the null hypothesis reject the null hypothesis let's see there is sufficient evidence that the distribution of colors is not the same as the manufacturer oh boy something fishy going on at the colored candy factory Okay, now we're gonna move on to ANOVA, which stands for Analysis of Variance. An Analysis of Variance um, table is always gonna look pretty much like this, and calculating the values is can be done using a calculator. I uh, wish that I could, we could do this with without actually pushing any buttons, but it's pretty easy to do. So um, what we have is three rows, the treatment, the error, and the total. Okay, so in all of these cases, the total row is going to be the total of the two numbers above it. Very simple, it's just addition. Now, to find the means, so we have the sum of squares for the treatment, the degrees of freedom, treat, the degrees of freedom for the treatment, then the mean squares. This is to say, what it, how many sum, what's the sum of the square per degree of freedom? So to find this number, we divide the sum of the squares by the degrees of freedom. The F statistic is the mean square for treatment divided by mean square for error. So 0.680. All righty. That's how you fill out an ANOVA table. Now, ANOVA is useful for a number of things, but one thing is, um, is if the... <clears throat> Comparing the means for more than two populations, more than more than two samples, so three or more samples. So um, let's see an example. At a community college, a mathematics department has been experimenting with four different delivery mechanisms for content in their intermediate algebra courses. One method is the traditional lecture, method one. The second is a hybrid format in which half the class time is online and the other is face-to-face, -face, method two. The third is online. The fourth is an emporium model from which students obtain their lectures and do their work in a lab with an instructor available for assistance. Method four. Okay. So there's four methods. That's all. To assess the effectiveness of the four methods, students in each appro approach are given the f a final exam with the results shown in the accompanying table. Ooh, let's look at the table. Numbers. Oh, look at all those numbers. That's too much to look at outside of StatCrunch. Let's put it in StatCrunch. I'm being facetious, but really, we're going to do all this stuff in StatCrunch, so that should be the uh, immediate thing to do with all of this data. Bring it in StatCrunch. Okay, do the data suggest that any method has a different mean score from the others? Well, the null hypothesis in situations like this would be that all the means are equal to each other. The alternative is that at least one of them is different. So that's the only way we phrase the null and the alternative in this case. So the null is that all the means are equal. So this is mu1, this is mu, the population mean for approach 1, equals mu2, equals mu3, equals mu4. I don't know what they are, but they're all equal. That's the null hypothesis. It's just claiming they're equal. It doesn't claim they are equal to any particular number, just that they're all equal. The alternative is that at least one of them is different. They could all be different to, from each other, but at least one of them is different. Okay, that's the null and the alternative. 
Um, requirements for an ANOVA procedure. We need to have uh, case samples independent of each other. That's necessary. So we have, in this case, we have four samples. We need to have four simple random samples, and they're, each one is coming from one of the four populations. That's another requirement. The populations, um, they uh, don't have to be nor normally distributed with the same mean, but they should be normally distributed or close to normally distributed with the same variance at least. And, um, and that's the three requirements. They should not be from the same population. So we're given an ANOVA table. Cool. Maybe we don't have to run it ourselves, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to create my own ANOVA table, because how do I know that that's right? I'm going to go into StatCrunch. I'm going to go to Stat. I'm going to go to ANOVA, a one-way ANOVA. And I'm going to select all four of these and click Compute and make my own ANOVA table, because I can. So let's just compare. We've got three, 702, Six, seven, yeah, okay, fine. The numbers are the same, but just wanted to double check it. That's how you create an ANOVA table <laughs> uh, from data. So, uh, but they're giving it to us here, so that's nice. So we're basing it on the p-value. This is a p-value of 0.223. Should it be? Should the null hypothesis be rejected? Well, that's a pretty high p-value. Um, we would normally only reject and here we're, we're using a 0 0.05 significance level. This 0.223, that's not greater than our, that's greater than the significance level. That means we do not reject. Do not reject, there is insufficient evidence to support H1, the alternative hypothesis. So let's see, side-by-side -side box plots. That's what they look like. I don't trust that. I'm going to make my own box plots. All right, let's go over to StatCrunch and just practice making side-by-side -side box plots again. Box plot, I'm going to select all four of them, and I'm going to do horizontal box plots and um, color scheme, basic seven colors. Ah, I don't need to do anything else. Just click Compute. Hmm, okay. Yeah, I guess that's right. That matches pretty much. Um, although it looks like it, I think that in their in their box plots they're putting they're putting the mean as that line instead of the median. Um, let's let's just check. I'm gonna put the mean in as green lines. Uh, no, I feel like they 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 messed up on that top one. I I don't know. I feel like that that's off. Um, this is not the same, but I'm not going to get too obsessed over it. They're telling me that that's the, those are the box plots, so I'll just take it. Okay. So what do we want to ask? Um, shown side by side, do the box plots support the result obtained? Like from these box plots, is it reasonable that to assume that they all have, all these populations have the same mean? Um, yeah, I mean, pretty much they all, they're, they're like the, 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 the middle, um, that middle 50% that's overlapping on all of them. There's a common overlap, um, even in mine. So I would say, yeah, it supports, um, it doesn't, it, it the, doesn't show that the, that they all have, that they have significantly different means. So I would say, yeah, that's fine. Interpret the p-value since the p-value is not less than alpha. Since it's greater than or equal to alpha, that there is insufficient evidence that any one method is more or less effective than the others. Yeah, that's that's how you interpret a p-value in this case. Um, verify the residuals are normally distributed. Okay, so let's look at the residual plot. Um, make a normal probability plot of residuals. So let's go back here. Let's go to stat. Let's go to... Um, uh, actually, on our on our uh, ANOVA, our one-way ANOVA, I want to graph a um, 
what's called a, a QQ plot of the residuals. A QQ plot of residuals uh, is what we're asked for here. I'm going to click compute and you'll, s oh, I didn't select my value, my variables, my variables, a QQ plot of residuals. It, it's, and it's going to be the second screen here. Um, this is um, I'm not able I'm not getting those little curvy bound things that it has here but um, what I've got here is residuals versus normal quantiles uh, I'd like to flip this around um, and I don't know if I'm able to do that this is a little bit frustrating okay you can see that on these examples we've got residual as the x as the x-axis and z-score and the y-axis um, it looks this this plot looks like uh, it looks a little bit like A and B, but I'm gonna look at um, look at B first. The problem is that my axes are flipped, so I'm gonna have to use my imagination to flip this stuff around. Um, unfortunately, that's kind of hard to do. Um, I I've got uh, so we're trying to look at this pattern to see. So we have this line that goes down, this diagonal line, and um, we want to compare uh, this. So this looks pretty. This looks pretty good, although that point is not too close to the line. Um, I'm going to go back to the other one. Mm. So you have to imagine you flip it over and see if it would match. No, this is. This isn't the right shape. I'm going with this with with choice B. That's closer. I know I had to you had to do a mirror image to to see it, but it's there. Um, anyway, what is that? What does a QQ plot mean? If these dots are along the diagonal, then that pretty much tells us that yeah, the populations are pretty much normally distributed. The plot is uh, approximately linear. I mean that's fine. We 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 don't have to be too picky. It is approximately linear, so I'm going to say yeah. We have we have normality in our in our pop, in our samples. A highway safety institution conducts experiments in which cars are crashed into a fixed barrier at 40 miles per hour in the institute's 40 per mile 40 mile per hour offset test. 40% of the total width of each vehicle strikes a barrier on the driver's side. The barrier's deformable face is made of aluminum honeycomb, which makes the forces in the test similar to those involved in a frontal offset crash between two vehicles of the same weight, each going less, just less than 40 miles per hour. You are in the market to buy a family car and want to know if the mean head injury resulting from the offset crash is the same for large family cars, passenger vans, and midsize utility vehicles. Okay, the data in the accompanying table were collected. So let's open the table. Let's bring it into StatCrunch. And then we're going to uh, do some ANOVA. Right, what we're interested in is whether the um, the mean value for the three samples is the same, right? If 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 let me say it a different way, we we want to see if this data supports the hypothesis that well all three of these types of cars have the same mean uh, collision uh, value, whatever it is, or whether one of them is different, and that's what we're looking for. The null hypothesis that the mean for cars equals the mean for vans equals the mean for SUVs, and the alternative is that at least one of the means is different. So if normal probability plot indicate that the sample points come from normal populations, are the requirements to use ANOVA satisfied? Yeah, well, as long as we've we've got random samples and it says that um, uh, it, it, this institute study, um, yeah, I mean, I think this is fine, but let's let's just check. Um, let's go back to StatCrunch and let's just do a little stat. Let's calculate summary stats for um, for all of this data. Here's what I want to compare. I'm going to compare their standard deviations. 
okay? I'm gonna compare them and we'll see. Standard deviations, 197, 188, 128. We wanna ask, is there sufficient kind of evidence here to suggest that one of the populations has a vastly different variance? Well, I don't know. I think that we can probably um, I mean, you can see that the mid-sized utility vehicles have a smaller standard deviation than large family cars, um, but I think that I think that that's fine. It, it, certainly, look at choice C. The largest sample standard deviation is more than twice the smallest. No, that's not true. The samples are independent. The populations, yeah. Um, let's see. Let's let's see if they're normally distributed. We can we can do that by um, doing a. Uh, a normality test on our data. Let's just throw all this stuff in and just run a normality test and see what we get. Um, normality test, it, it's a very easy way to test if your data is 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 normally distributed. Um, so you've got you've got your sample and your the hypothesis test is null hypothesis. The data is normally distributed. Alternative, it's not. So if your p-value is small, you would reject the null hypothesis. All of these p-values are bigger than, say, 0 0.05. So there's no reason to say any one of these is not normal. So we're going to say they're all normal. So yeah, everything's, everything's there. Everything's all the requirements are there for doing a ANOVA. So let's do the ANOVA. Let's do stat ANOVA, a one-way ANOVA. And let's get our data, click Compute, and we have our ANOVA table, which has an F statistic in it, to three decimal places, 0 0.391. All right. And the p-value here is 0 0.68. Um, I'm taking, what, three decimal places? Oh, 04, 18. Uh, the p-value is big. That's very big. I don't want to reject the null hypothesis. So there is insufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Thus, we conclude, thus we what? Cannot conclude that the means are different. Certainly not at an alpha level of 0 0.01. 0.68 is a very big p-value. Uh, box plot for the three vehicles. Okay, now let's do our box plot. Let's let's close this stuff. Or let's move it to the side. Stat, or no, it's graph. Graph box plots. Let's do side by side box plots, and <clears throat> make them horizontal, and click compute. We've got. Boop -a -doop -a -doo. All right, we've got large family cars, passenger vans, and SUVs. So we should have SUV, van, cars. And it looks like it matches this. I think so. Yeah, for sure. Great. Well, Anyway, that's that's how we do ANOVA in StatCrunch. I uh, hope you do well on the assignment, and let me know if there's anything you need. All right, bye.